FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's, guess what? It's May 15th, 5 15 18. Whatever you can glean from that. I'm sure if you're a numerologist, it's a very profound number. But uh, if you're like the rest of us, well, who knows? As always, be part of the show. We love when you participate. Getting your emails first thing in the morning is the best part of my day, even if they're not pleasant. At least you're paying attention. So the email address, once again, kl at kerrylutz.com. So when we last spoke with Nick Santiago, Nick, you were predicting a major breakout in the dollar. After the dollar had hit a low, I think it was around 87 here we are today, dollar going higher yet again. I guess I should tell you what the dollar is, so so I'm not just quoting useless statistics for you. According to Kitco, at this particular moment, dollar ninety three twenty eight. So it's up six, almost uh, it's about eight or nine percent. But that is a huge move in the dollar in currency markets. Nick, welcome back to the show. We're thrilled to have you on. Uh, it's great to be back, Terry. Thank you again for having me. As always. So the dollar, that's become the theme of financial markets now, hasn't it? It certainly has. And the funny thing is when I was on your program and I, I said, you know, I believe the dollar's put in a major bottom. You know, I, I guess a few people probably laughed at me, but uh, here we are, you know, the dollar soaring and roaring and the euro is tumbling and people are now scratching their heads. And I, you know, I was telling you guys that was going to be the theme and that would also be the catalyst for gold going down. And, you know, both have, uh, have, have played out that way. So yeah, sometimes, you know, we get it right. And, um, again, you know, the writing was on the wall and, uh, uh, you know, it was, it, it's been a tremendous move in the dollar and you can see that the strength is still there and it should continue for some time. You really think it's going to go on? So, well, to me, you know, you always say, and you've told me this, you taught me a lot about markets. The markets, every price in every market tells a story. To me, this story is telling me, oh, maybe the problems with the euro and all of those marginal players in the eurozone isn't done yet. Maybe Deutsche Bank really is not a fully functioning bank. Maybe they're still really on life support. It's saying there's a lot more going on here than the media or the governments want you to believe. I couldn't uh, agree more. I, if you, in fact, if you look at a chart of Deutsche Bank, um, the stock is trading at thirteen dollars. It's probably the worst looking chart out there. In fact, you know, you could go back to two thousand and seven. This thing is now below its two thousand eight lows. So, uh, Deutsche Bank looks horrible on the charts, and I think that is definitely a barometer. Then you can look at countries like Italy. Italy, it's finally getting a little bit of press where you have this coalition uh, government forming and they're looking for debt forgiveness, much like we've already seen in Greece. Greece has got their own issues again. I mean, there's just so much negative stuff going on in, in Europe. And then you have Mario Draghi continuing to just buy debt endlessly over there just to keep this thing alive. Um, it's just a failed science project. And we've been talking, and on, talking about it on your show for years. And, you know, with the dollar going down, everybody was thinking Europe looks great. Everything is good, but it is just a disaster and it's, it's, it's going to get worse before it gets better. So again, it's, it's tradable and that's what we look to do. But the dollar, you know, right now probably heads up to around 94.50 to 95, takes a little bit of a pause. And then, you know, as we go uh, longer term, I think the dollar continues to go higher. So you know, we'll see how it plays out. Nothing goes up in a straight line. But we have had a tremendous move in, in the U.S. dollar index. And remember, that's the dollar versus a basket of six currencies. And the most heavily weighted currency against the dollar in that basket is the euro. And, and you know, the whole thing is fascinating because you totally nailed this. I'm not just uh, kissing your butt. You nailed it. And certain other moves like Dr. Charles Nenner, he called the VIX index like two months ago. It went from uh, 13 to 51 and then it crashed back down. What, what's your feeling about volatility? 
Yeah, I, I think volatility, when we get volatility back down to 12 or so, I think it's, it's a buy every time in 2018. Um, the markets overall should be range bound and we get down to the low end of, of the market, say on the S and P 500, uh, it, when it gets down to, um, you know, somewhere around 25, 50, 25, the February lows, um, you know, then, then the markets will bounce right now. I think we're at the high end of the range. So I actually like volatility here myself. Um, we're just mm-hmm. not seeing a lot of, participation in the market, meaning the volume trends are pretty light right now, which is a little bit strange to see how light it has gotten. But, um, you know, once we get a hard, heavy volume sell-off day, I think uh, you'll see fear come back in the market. And, you know, there's so many catalysts out here that could occur. I don't know which one will, but the charts are now telling me we're, we're once again at the high end of the range. And we've been making a series of lower highs in the S&P. And I think that's what we're looking or possibly doing again. So it doesn't mean it's a death sentence for the market, but 2018 is what we call a choppy year and it, it's going to mimic 2008 a little bit with the choppiness, but we're not going to have a Lehman like event in the U S or anything like that. But I do think we're going to see continued choppiness really into the fall season. Really? Well, that's remarkable. And so, <laughs> you know, just looking ahead there in your crystal ball, you know, this is going to be a new normal then than what we've had for the past two years, which was just like a set it and forget it mindset, right? Yes, absolutely. So, you know, in 2017, it was really just buy and hold and everything went higher. There were really no problems. You had the tax cuts that, you know, gave a big shot in the arm to to equities. And, um, you know, now we've just gone through earnings season here and companies reported you know, pretty decent numbers for the most part. Some didn't, um, but, you know, the markets uh, held up pretty well. So, you know, all in all, it's just going to be one of those years where uh, you'll see just, you know, we'll go down into the low end of the range, then we'll bounce and we'll come back up to the high end of the range, back to the low end of the range, to the high end of the range. And we're just going to see this choppiness somewhat in, in, in a sideways channel. And then when we get to the fall season, uh, volume probably lightens up again and, you know, we get a nice end of year rally and, you know, the markets will finish up, you know, five, six percent or something like that. But that's that's what I'm thinking. I'll have to readjust my uh, strategy as I as it goes along and I see the patterns unfold. But that's the overall map that I'm looking at right now. That's fascinating, which means that that uh, you can't just buy and hold. So is it a, what you would call a stock pickers market or do you just play the uh, the volatility? You could do both. You could do both. Um, but I, it is a stock pickers market. So I'll give you a great example. Um, I just closed out a trade on United Technologies just the other day, which I picked up on May 3rd. Uh, I'm sorry, I picked up on May 1st. And, uh, you know, I, I made seven points on, on the on the second half position. Now I'm out of it. You know, maybe it goes a little bit higher from here, but that's, that's how it is. You're going to find these stocks that are beaten down, uh, that come down sharply, and they hit, you know, very, very good support levels. And that's where you could get involved in those names. And then other names that, you know, are, are very, very popular, um, you know, if they get up and they get to these extreme uh, levels, then, you know, you want to be out of those out of those names and wait for pullbacks but this is 2018 is completely opposite of 2017 it is completely a stock pickers market and you really have to know how to navigate otherwise you know you're better off just sitting in an index fund and just waiting it out yeah which is potentially dangerous though sitting in an index fund isn't it well, it's dangerous if you bought it at the top, <laughs> but yeah. if you if you sit in an index fund and just say um, you want to buy the spiders, you know the spiders go to two two fifty or you know maybe two forty five. You, you that's that's a spot where I would get interested in it. Um, ultimately, this is you know a range bound year, so you just don't want to buy at times like right now that you know where we've had a good run um, for the last uh, six seven weeks. So you know that's something I always try to tell traders like. Hey, you know, get used to when everybody loves something, you don't want to love it. When everybody hates something, you know, that's when I want to love it. I always call myself a good Samaritan trader because when somebody can't take it anymore, I usually will take it off their hands. And when somebody wants something so bad, I'll usually just give it to them. (laughs) Yeah, well, there's a new movie out called Bad Samaritan. Uh, Maybe we ought to find out about that. (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, you know, it's just uh, it's just amazing though to watch this this thing unfold because it's not going the way anybody ever expected, right? I mean, nobody oh. predicted this really, but you uh, pretty close. I, I've done pretty well. 2018 has been um, a blockbuster year for us, and that's, that's so far so good. Again, you know, I always tell traders we're, we're never going to be perfect. It, you know, it's just a humbling business. And, um, you know, if I've learned anything over the years, I've learned that um, markets have energy to the upside. They have energy to the downside. And, you know, we always try to antici anticipate the anticipators is what we used to say in the 90s. So, you know, again, you just have to look at the charts and just – try to take price pattern and time and put them together. You know, one thing the legendary trader Jesse Livermore used to say, he used to say the stock market is never obvious. It's, it's designed to fool most of the people most of the time. Yeah. And it and, does. <laughs> um, that's, yeah. So that's this kind of market. Now, if you're like Warren Buffett and you're in the stock market, you know, and you've caught, you know, the greatest rallies of all time. Hey, listen, God bless them. Um, you know, the guys made fortunes and, 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 you know, my hat's off to them. But if you're, you know, a trader and, um, you know, you've dealt with markets since say 2000, uh, you've seen some pretty amazing crashes. And, you know, for me, I, I like to, you know, I'm considered a bit of a market timer. So, you know, I like to watch the trends of these markets and, and get out when it tells me to get out and get back in when it tells me to get back in. And like we said, the market's always communicating. It's just whether or not you can hear its message, right? That's 100% right. And the way it communicates to us is by the technicals, looking at these pattern formations. Remember, human nature never changes. Therefore, the markets don't change. Now, I know a lot of traders believe with all the algorithms that are out, but these algorithms are still programmed by humans. And, you know, human nature just, just doesn't change. So, uh, again, I, I prefer that the algorithms stay in place. I like high-frequency trading, and um, they, they benefit us. So, you know, uh, again, just watch the chart patterns. The chart will tell you everything you need to know. How do you think uh, high-frequency trading really benefits uh, you, the market participant? Well, for one thing, it keeps liquidity in, into the system, and that's, that's very good for us. And number two, we have a, a way of reading the, the, the charts, and we call it reading the tape. And very, very often we can see um, just by using the patterns and the structure of the patterns when a market is about to pop or break out. So, uh, again, it's, it's not a perfect system, but it's, it's a very, very good system. And with high frequency in there, you know, you get rewarded a lot quickly if you're correct. And that, that helps us a lot. And I, I still prefer it. And I like that liquidity in the marketplace. But doesn't that liquidity dry up, Nick, once, uh, once they get a little scared off, once the market starts going down? Well, once the market goes down, believe it or not, there's actually more liquidity because you have so much sell pressure and then you have the market makers, which are obligated to buy, right? So they got to buy and sell. So they have to make a market in that particular equity. So, you know, it doesn't really, um, if, as long as we're on the short side, we actually prefer it if the market's going down. So it goes down a lot quicker um, when it falls. It's, uh, the old saying is the markets take the stairs up and the elevator down. So, uh, <laughs> The stairs you know. up and the that's a great uh, old <laughs> truism of Wall Street. Um, yeah, so we kind of prefer it. <laughs> You know, they might even take the uh, ledge off the side of the building if it goes down fast enough, right? <laughs> the, <I've seen> it. <laughs> the swan dive off, right? <laughs> the swan dive it. off the uh, Empire State Building, if you will. Yeah, it's, it's an amazing uh, time to be around here. And you just keep thinking, wow, you know, you think you've seen it all. And then, and then you get surprised, Nick, right? Yeah, you think you've seen it all, and then um, the markets will come up with something new. And the, the irony of it is a lot of people always ask me for the catalyst, and they always say, hey, you know, what is it going to be? And, and I always say, well, there's these problems out there. And then very, very often uh, the chart will tell us there's a problem out there. It won't be any of those problems. The news will report something completely different. So, you know, I, I never try to even predict the catalyst. I, I never, ever know what the catalyst is going to be. It's just – it just happens, and you know the charts are usually one step ahead. But like I said, there will be times where you're humbled by the uh, by the market, and um, you know you do get it wrong. And nothing, nobody, anybody that tells you they're 100 percent correct, you know what they're full of, and um, it's a humbling business. But and what you know, are they if you selling you? <laughs> a, a good average in this business, you're you're going to make a good living. And that's that's really the key to it all. 
And that's what you teach people how to do, right? That's correct. That's what we do. And um, again, we've been doing this now. Uh, our company's been around now over 11 years. So wow. we've now taught thousands of traders. And the funny thing is um, when markets were going a little bit haywire, my phone rings off the hook. So, you know, I'll, I'll get people calling up and saying hedge funds and other mm -hmm. uh, money managers. And they will say, hey, what, what's going on? Can you help me here? You know, and I'll say, how come you're not using the charts? And uh, they're, they're fundamental traders. They're looking at P.E. ratios. They're looking at um, earnings to book value. They're looking at a whole bunch of different metrics except the charts. And I, I always chuckle at that. And I say, why do you? What, what does that stuff tell you? I said, doesn't money flow going in or out of the stock, isn't that all that matters? Yeah. And, you know, they, they all want to buy yeah. on these, you know, fundamental reasons. So it still amazes me to this day, but keeps me in business. <laughs> so, yeah, really your thing is when in doubt, go back to the chart, right? I'm always about the chart. So there's to, to me, it's always, always, always about the charts. And, you know, as you could just look at some simple things on the charts, just like is the chart making uh, higher lows or is it making lower highs? Uh, what's the formation? You know, is it going sideways? Is, is it in a channel? Uh, where's the moving averages and where is the stock mm -hmm. trading uh, adjacent to the moving average? There's so many different uh, technical pictures, you know, they always have that saying a picture is worth a thousand words and I think it's worth 10,000. So I look at a picture of a chart and some people will see chaos. I see a Picasso and, um, you know, if, if traders get to appreciate and read the charts, they'll be surprised how much more they can learn by just, you know, hearing all the noise of, you know, earnings and book value. How many times have you heard a company report great earnings and the stock plunges that day, right? Yeah. And they got it higher and they said, you know, this is the best and we're getting better and we're going to create this, that, and the other thing. And the next thing you know, the stock is in the toilet bowl. And that's because the market is a forward-looking mechanism. It's, it's a predictor of the future. It looks out six to nine months and it already knows. So I think, you know, that's why I use charts because it's all about money flow. Are the institutions getting into a stock or are they getting out of a stock? And really, really, that's all that matters. So what about the manipulation and all that? Is that does the chart kind of uh, allow you to see the manipulation without getting caught up in it? Absolutely. Absolutely. We know there's manipulation in the market every single day for one reason. We know that before a big announcement, there's always options bought on a particular stock in, in, in a huge amount. And, you know, you could go back and look and before any major event happens, somebody always knows something, right? That's the old saying, follow the money. Hmm. And we always know that somebody always knows something, but we don't know anything except that the pattern is telling us something. So, you know, we don't have inside information or anything like that, but we have the chart pattern and the chart pattern, I will take that over any other pattern. And, um, you know, it, it really is still amazing to this very day. And I might have told you the story once before, Kerry, but at one time I was at a party and there was a CFO there of a Fortune 500 company. And the guy had a little bit too much to drink and he was blabbing off and somebody introduced me to him and they, were, they, said, to, uh, they said to me, hey, this is so-and-so from this company. And the guy was like, buy my stock. My earnings are going to, you know, be off the charts. They're going to be the best earnings. And I looked and I knew the stock, I knew the company very well. And I was like, that stock's a short, it's not even going up anymore. And that morning, I'll never forget, the earnings came out on a Tuesday morning, I think it was, and the stock popped and it was up big in the pre-market. And then it just, once the opening bell rings, it, it collapsed and it, it, it was down about, you know, really? 15, 16% that day. And I said, okay. there you go, it's all about the chart. It has nothing to do with the, uh, <laughs> You know, with the numbers. And you think you're getting it from the horse's mouth. The insider, the guy who knows where the dollars are buried, where they're going in the company, and yet uh, not the case. Not the case. Yeah, that's, that was not the case. That's so, really you know, cool. Sometimes I always tell people, I said, be careful where you get your information from. You know, just take the charts. They're real time. They're live time. And they don't lie to you. You know, they're just telling you the truth. Now, this C CFO didn't, didn't lie either. His numbers were very good. He did guide higher, but the market already knew that it, what those numbers were going to be. The market had already priced it in. And uh, needless to say, that stock has never seen that price again. 
That is a cool story. Uh, you got a lot of good stories, Nick, and you got a lot of good advice and a lot of good information. It's in the money stocks.com. You got a free trial for FSN listeners. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Tell them to come on over to get a seven day free trial to our day trading chat room. Also to our swing trading program, which is uh, the research center. And you'll get all of my nightly reports. You'll get all of my trade setups. Everything is in there. It's a great program. You'll also get my partner's setups as well. So uh, come on over. That's part of the Research Center. And again, we offer that seven-day free trial. Give it a test drive. See, see if you like it. All right. Hey, it's always great having you again. Any questions for Nick? You got to have questions for him. Just email them to us. We'll read them when we interview him next month. The email address is kl at kerrylutz.com. You know, if you're on YouTube, make sure you click the subscribe button and all that stuff and the alarm so you automatically get notified. For some reason, Nick, we're getting like a zillion YouTube listeners. I have absolutely no idea why, but just keep listening. Keep subscribing. Nick, we'll talk to you again real soon. Again, thank you so much for coming on. Always great to have you. Thank you, Kerry, and uh, thank you again. Appreciate it, and uh, I love being on the show. Thank you. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. You know, we'll go down into the low end of the range, then we'll bounce and we'll come back up to the high end of the range, back to the low end of the range, to the high end of the range. And we're just going to see this choppiness somewhat in, in, in a sideways channel. And then when we get to the fall season, uh, volume probably lightens up again and, you know, we get a nice end of year rally and, you know, the markets will finish up, you know, five, six percent or something like that. But that's that's what I'm thinking. I'll have to readjust my uh strategy as I, as it goes along and I see the patterns unfold, but that's the overall map that I'm looking at right now. That's fascinating, which means that, that, uh, you can't just buy and hold. So is it a, what you would call a stock pickers market or do you just play the, uh, the volatility? You could do both. You could do both. Um, but I, it is a stock pickers market. So I'll give you a great example. Um, I just closed out a trade on United Technologies just the other day, which I picked up on May 3rd. Uh, I'm sorry, I picked up on May 1st. And, uh, you know, I, I made seven points on, on, the, on the second half position. Now I'm out of it. You know, maybe it goes a little bit higher from here, but that's, that's how it is. You're going to find these stocks that are beaten down, uh, that come down sharply, and they hit, you know, very, very good support levels. And that's where you could get involved in those names. And then other names that, you know, are, are very, very popular, um, you know, if they get up and they get to these extreme uh, levels, then, you know, you want to be out of, those, out of those names and wait for pullbacks. But this is 2018 is completely opposite of 2017. It is completely a stock picker's market, and you really have to know how to navigate. Otherwise, you know, you're better off just sitting in an index fund and just waiting it out. Yeah, which is potentially dangerous. February lows, um, you know, then, then the markets will bounce. Right now, I think we're at the high end of the range, so I actually like volatility here myself. Um, we're just mm -hmm. not seeing a lot of participation in the market, meaning the volume trends are pretty light right now, which is a little bit strange to see how light it has gotten. But, um, you know, once we get a hard, heavy volume sell-off day, I think uh, you'll see fear come back in the market. And, you know, there's so many catalysts out here that could occur. I don't know which one will, but the charts are now telling me we're, we're once again at the high end of the range. And we've been making a series of lower highs in the S&P. And I think that's what we're looking or possibly doing again. So it doesn't mean it's a death sentence for the market, but 2018 is what we call a choppy year, and it, it's going to mimic 2008 a little bit with the choppiness, but we're not going to have a Lehman-like event in the U.S. or anything like that. But I do think we're going to see continued choppiness really into the fall season. Really? Well, that's remarkable. And so, <laughs> you know, just looking ahead there in your crystal ball, you know, this is going to be a new normal then than what we've had for the past two years, which was just like a set it and forget it mindset, right? Yes, absolutely. So, you know, in 2017, it was really just buy and hold and everything went higher. There were really no problems. You had the tax cuts that, you know, gave a big shot in the arm to, to equities. And, um, you know, now we've just gone through earnings season here and companies reported 
you know, pretty decent numbers for the most part. Some didn't, um, but, you know, the markets uh, held up pretty well. So, you know, all in all, it's just going to be one of those years where uh, you'll see just as, and the funny thing is when I was on your program and I, I said, you know, I believe the dollar's put in a major bottom, you know, I, I guess a few people probably laughed at me, but uh, here we are, you know, the dollar soaring and roaring and the euro is tumbling and people are now scratching their heads. And I, you know, I was telling you guys that was going to be the theme and that would also be the catalyst for gold going down. And, you know, both have, uh, have, have played out that way. So yeah, sometimes, you know, we get it right. And, um, again, you know, the writing was on the wall and, uh, uh, you know, it was, it, it's been a tremendous move in the dollar and you can see that the strength is still there and it should continue for some time. You really think it's going to go on? So, well, to me, you know, you always say, and you've told me this, you've taught me a lot about markets, the markets, every price and every market tells a story. To me, this story is telling me, oh, maybe the problems with the euro and all of those marginal players in the eurozone isn't done yet. Maybe Deutsche Bank really is not a fully functioning bank. Maybe they're still really on life support. It's saying there's a lot more going on here than the media or the governments want you to believe. I couldn't uh, agree more. I, if you, in fact, if you look at a chart of Deutsche Bank, um, the stock is trading at thirteen dollars. It's probably the worst looking chart out there. In fact, you know, you could go back to two thousand and seven. This thing is now below its two thousand eight lows. So. Uh, Deutsche Bank looks horrible on the charts, and I think that is definitely a barometer. Then you can look at countries like Italy. Italy, it's finally getting a little bit of the press, where you have this coalition uh, government forming, and they're looking for debt forgiveness, much like we've already seen in Greece. Greece has got their own issues again. I mean, there's just so much negative stuff going on in, in Europe, and then you have Mario Draghi continuing to just buy debt endlessly over there just to keep this thing alive. Um, it's just a failed science project, and we've been talking and on, talking about it on your show for years. And you know, with the dollar going down, everybody was thinking Europe looks great, everything is good, but it is just a disaster, and it's 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 going to get worse before it gets better. So again, it's it's tradable, and that's what we look to do. But the dollar, you know, right now probably heads up to around ninety four fifty to ninety five, takes a little bit of a pause, and then you know, as we go. Uh, longer term, I think the dollar continues to go higher. So you know, we'll see how it plays out. Nothing goes up in a straight line, but we have had a tremendous move in, in the U.S. dollar index. And remember, that's the dollar versus a basket of six currencies. And the most heavily weighted currency against the dollar in that basket is the euro. And, and you know, the whole thing is fascinating because you totally nailed this. I'm not just uh, kissing your butt. You nailed it. And certain other moves like Dr. Charles Nenner, he called the VIX index like two months ago. It went from uh, 13 to 51, and then it crashed back down. What, what's your feeling about volatility? Yeah, I, I think volatility, when we get volatility back down to 12, or so, I think it's it's a buy every time in 2018. Um, the markets overall should be range bound, and we get down to the low end of of the market, say on the S and P 500, uh, it, when it gets down to um, you know somewhere around 25, 50, 25. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's, guess what? It's May 15th, 5 15, 18. Whatever you can glean from that. I'm sure if you're a numerologist, it's a very profound number. But uh, if you're like the rest of us, well, who knows? As always, be part of the show. We love when you participate. Getting your emails first thing in the morning is the best part of my day. Even if they're not pleasant, at least you're paying attention. So the email address, once again, kl at kerrylutz.com. So when we last spoke with Nick Santiago, Nick, you were predicting a major breakout in the dollar. After the dollar had hit a low, I think it was around 87 here we are today, dollar going higher yet again. 
I guess I should tell you what the dollar is, so so I'm not just quoting useless statistics for you. According to Kitco, at this particular moment, dollar ninety three twenty eight. So it's up six, almost. Uh, it's about eight or nine percent, but that is a huge move in the dollar in currency markets. Nick, welcome back to the show. We're thrilled to have you on. Uh, it's great to be back, Terry. Thank you again for having me. As always, so the dollar, that's become the theme of financial markets now, hasn't it? It certainly has.